Hi everyone, welcome to Sweet Stitches Demo Day. It's October and our theme this month is Quilttober. So we're taking everything quilting and October and kind of mixing them together. So there's going to be lots of um, leaves and pumpkins and all things fall today and quilting. So let's start off with a um, project that I didn't quite get all the way bound. In fact, there's my needle. Um, I wanted to show this one to you first. This is called Pumpkin Trio. And it is by Fig Tree and Company Quilts. Um, she is a designer for Moda Fabrics. Um, and of course, as you know, I don't always use exactly the fabrics that they do in the pattern. Uh, we picked um, colors here in the shop that we had and went with those. And we like how it turned out. It's a cute pattern. It's easy to go together. Um, this one took a couple of days. Um, and the binding should be on it by Friday morning. So you should be able to come in and see it in person. And that is called Pumpkin Trio by Fig Tree Quilts. Um, next, we'll do this one. Um, this is a pattern and template set, um, and it's called Cherry Picking. And it's by um, my, me and my sister, Designs, and they also design from Moda Fabrics. They usually um, design in really bright, brightly colored fabrics. And um, instead of cherry picking, today we're going to do pumpkin picking instead because we've done ours in fall colors. And so here is the block. It's very cute. We had a, a lot of fun making them. Um, I have a couple more here to show you, but um, very easy block to do, and I'm going to show you how we put it um, together real quick. So the pattern was designed <clears throat> um, to use um, charm squares, like a charm square pack. And so what you do is um, you take the charm squares and you sew them all together. And if you've ever done a twister block, um, it's similar to that, where you create a quilt and then you take the template. Sorry, don't put it out here. You take the template, which is this is a little tiny one. They also make a larger ruler that you could use for the same exact um, project, and it's called the Double Wide Dresden. And um, I'll be getting more of those in the shop very soon. Um, but for now, back to cherry picking or pumpkin picking, whichever you want to call it. But what you're going to do is there are lines on the uh, template and you're going to line them up with the seams um, on your fabric. And so then you're going to cut them out. And yes, there is waste with this, but you can also cut your own squares instead of using a charm pack and use less fabric um, when cutting these out. Um, we didn't use a charm square. We used um, fabric strips that we had here in the in the uh, shop. So um, after you've traced and cut out your pattern pieces, it's going to look like this. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to um, fold each one of these in half lengthwise like this and you're going to sew straight across the top and straight across the bottom and what this does is it creates like a little pocket and when you flip it inside out you're going to get well, I guess I don't have the little shape here you're going to get one of these little shapes right here um, then you're going to sew those shapes together because this, is, this edge is turned under and this edge is turned under. And so when we um, sew them together, we'll have two raw edges on this, and a raw edge on this side and a raw edge on this side. And so we'll sew the raw edges together and we'll have um, a Dresden block 
or a variation of Dresden. Um, and you can see on the back here, it's not quite as pretty as the front, but that's all going to be appliqued down. Um, and so here is, I had already shown you this block. This one is appliqued, um, and I machine appliqued it. Um, but first, uh, when you're First, when you're um, putting it together and you're sewing the wedges together, you're going to need to leave um, like about an inch uh, of thread tail on both ends. And you're going to want to take a glue stick, and it doesn't matter what kind you use, whether it's just a basic fabric glue stick or, you know, one of these um, fabric glue pens that we carry here in the shop. We carry all three brands. Um, but you take a glue stick and you pull those threads to the back side and you glue those um, kind of in the seam. And what this does is it just keeps your uh, wedges from coming apart um, at the stop and start um, and it neatly um, finishes them off. And so that glue will wash out when you wash the quilt and it doesn't really hurt the quilt at all. It's just a little bit of glue. And so then what you want to do is you want to stick a pin in each one of these blades onto your background square fabric. In this case, it's a 13 inch square um, and it's going to be trimmed down too. This is a little bit uh, large for uh, this uh, block, but um, you're going to stick a pin in and you want to stick the pin, um, you know, with the vertically with the blades and um, you want to do one in each each blade and then you want to do your applique stitch and so I chose to do a blanket stitch and I also um, decided that I was going to use um, 80 weight applique thread um, this is um, a poly cotton what it is is a cotton core and they wrap it with poly on the outside so it's 80 weight so that means it's super thin and so it just um, makes a really nice um, applique that kind of blends into the fabric um, stitch uh, beautifully it uh, really looks nice and when you come into the shop to see the samples um, you're going to be able to see how nicely it quilts around um, the blocks and I think I'm going to definitely be using more of this. Um, we have it in lots of different colors um, to match your projects. On my project I decided just to go with this nice um, kind of uh, like lemon yellow uh, color uh, to go around the block and so uh, you would need to go around the inside first and then around the outside edge and that's just going to secure everything in place it's not going to come off there you're not going to be able to you know pick at the corners and and bring those up or anything it lays lays really nice there and it's going to wash up nice too one of the things that you can do is to add a color behind the center different than what your background color is so in this one it's just the background fabric. And this one, I've added a square because I just had all these extra squares laying around. Added an extra square and I just kind of gave it a quick little glue to the back right there. And then I'm gonna put it on my background fabric, line it up, and then I'm going to do my, pin it and do my applique stitch with the 80 weight um, thread. Uh, so one of the things that I found when I was pressing these is that the wool mats have quickly become one of my favorite um, sewing tools. If you don't have one of these, I really highly encourage you to get one. Things press so much nicer on um, the wool mats. They uh, they don't crush what you're, um, what you're pressing, and they also um, 
warm up nicely so that you get a really good press when you're um, when you're pressing your foot blocks. And it's great for pressing um, applique shapes. And so that is called cherry picking. And you do get the template and the pattern um, in the bag. So that's a good one to give a try to. And this will look great in lots of different colors. And on the pattern, you see it's done in uh, spring or summer colors. We did it in fall, it looked great in Christmas, and it looked great in red, white, and blue too. When I did my applique um, for uh, the blocks that I just showed you, um, I did use um, Quilter Select, um, Select Tearaway, and this has a nice light um, adhesive on the back of it that is almost like a wax-like uh, freezer paper, and you iron it to the back of the block, and then you do your applique, and then it easily tears off because it's real thin. Um, this is now my favorite stabilizer to stick on the back of applique just because it is so easily removable. And it's also very light, it's not heavy and um, thick um, to try and get your applique stitches to lay nicely on. So um, you definitely want to give that a try and you definitely want to give um, the thread a try too, if you do any kind of applique. And I did piece together some pieces for other blocks that I did with that thread. And I have to say it's really nice because it's super thin, so it doesn't take up a lot of space um, in the seam. So you might want to try it for piecing too. Okay, so some other projects that I was working on. Um, these are classes that are going to be coming up month of October. And one of them is our new um, beginner quilter class is now doing a table runner. And the table runner is called Daydream, and it's by Pink Sand Beaches Designs. Um, it's a great little table runner, uh, very easy to do, and it's great for beginners, or if you just need a really simple project to do. And so I did it in my favorite fall fabric here in the shop. This is a batik with sunflowers on it. Um, with greens and peaches and golden colors. It's really just a really lovely piece. And so this is the front of the table runner. And like I said, this is a beginner class. Um, so you can see the block is actually right here. That's the block. And you're gonna put, we put four of them together and that creates the larger block. And then we do three of the large blocks to create the table runner. And I use, and how, how you choose your fabrics and where you place them really changes up the look of the table runner because um, my different students, they all pick different types of fabrics. And some chose a dark where there would be the light and it gives a whole different look to uh, the table runner. And of course, you can always just flip it over and use the solid one on the back too you want to. Um, in the class you learn everything from how to use a rotary cutter all the way to how to put on a binding correctly. So um, it's a great class if, if you're new to quilting and maybe you just want to or you want to freshen up your skills. Um, it's a great class to take. It's four weeks. Um, it would be like every this month it's um, Every Friday, not this Friday, but starting next Friday, it would be um, every Friday of the month. And we work for two and a half hours on uh, all the piecing and quilting and everything in the class. And if you um, wanna just make the um, table runner for yourself or maybe your holiday table, um, again, the, the name of the pattern is Daydream Table Runner. Another class that's coming up 
is, um, which this is a great um, wall hanging or table runner for, um, for the holidays. This is called Green Tea and it is by Southwest Designs. And Southwest Designs um, creates these um, curved look um, pieces uh, for their quilt blocks. If you've ever seen a Mexican star quilt, um, it's the same concept where you're um, bolt, folding back the fabric and creating this um, curved section right here. This is all just a pieced quilt. Um, there are no curves in this quilt that you have to um, try and piece together. So um, it's a fun one. You can use lots of different fun fabrics. You know, if you wanted to do a totally um, tone on tone kind of look, that would be very sharp too. It even would look cool in, you know, lots of different grays, maybe black and white. And so that's called Green Tea. And that class is going to take place October 20th and 27th at the two part class. While we're on the subject of um, South, Wind, South Wind Designs, um, they have a pumpkin uh, pattern that I did not get to. You can see here's all my pieces that I need to uh, piece together. But this is also an upcoming class that will take place next week, um, so I better get busy. Um, it's called Pumpkin Stack, and there are two different, um, actually there's three different uh, wall hangings or placemats or table runners um, in this pattern. And the one that we're going to be um, that I'm going to make is actually not even pictured here or anywhere on the pattern. It's just um, the layout is a little bit different than what you see here. But it's the same concept of you're not actually piecing the curves together. Um, it's all in bending back um, folding fabric to create the curves that creates the curves of the pumpkins on here. And so this is called Pumpkin Stack and it's going to take place on October 8th. It's an afternoon class, so if you think that that might be something fun that you would want to do, go ahead and sign up for that on our website or call the shop. And that's called Pumpkin Stacks. Um, another class that I do every year um, around this time in October is um, my Happy Hexagon um, Pumpkins. Uh, this is just a pattern that I made up using a 60 degree um, triangle ruler by Creative Grids. Um, so there's no um, Y seams or anything here. Um, there's all made out of triangles. Uh, and uh, it's quick and easy to put together and you could have it done by, um, by Halloween. It's taking place either October 6th or 21st and it's called Happy Hexagon Pumpkins. So I did get a few things finished this time, all the way finished. Um, this is called Vintage Series October Wall Hanging, and this is by Shabby Fabrics. A lot of you might be familiar with their website. Um, she makes up really great uh, applique designs. Um, and this is their pumpkin, or their October wall hanging. It's 12 and a half by 18. And um, we use some cute new fabrics that we have in the shop that are part of the Wilmington collection. Um, it's a nice um, fall, um, even Thanksgiving um, style. It has these cute plaids in it and this um, pretty little background fabric. I think if I would have made the, the quilt again, I might have used maybe something in the background that was a little bit lighter. But once you get started, uh, you just kind of go with it. And so this one was appliqued, and they give you two applique patterns um, in the pattern 
uh, to trace. And one is if you want to do hand applique, and the other one is if you want to trace the pattern to use fusible paper backed, uh, fusible for um, adhering your appliques to the, to the fabric. So um, on here I used, again, buttonhole stitch. I really like to use that one um, around appliques. It just gives it a pretty look. Uh, you'll have to come in and see this one up close in the shop. It's a, it's a really cute one. And again, the pattern is called October Wall Hanging um, by Shabby Fabrics. So back in September, no, uh, August, I showed a few Christmas things. And one of them was this tiny tree uh, template set and pattern. And so uh, this is the tree that I ended up making. And we're not really talking Christmas this time, but I wanted to show you that you can make other things out of the little tiny pattern. And this time what I did is instead of adding a trunk at the bottom, I added a little band and I created this little pin cushion with a little witch's hat on it. Um, it's a cute little gift that you can give to your quilting buddy at um, Halloween. Um, and uh, it's just another way to use this cute little template, which I'd love to make a whole little forest of these little trees. And I was thinking that you could even do a Santa Claus hat and maybe use a little white button for the ball on the top of this, of this little red hat. So there's another idea for the template. Um, this is back in the Christmas section in our shop, um, and it's it's very easy to make, and they're just kind of fun. You can use up all your different scraps uh, making them. Um, let's see. Let's do this one. And so... Last month I talked about the new wire frames that we have in. It's called the small tote frame and it's called the wired frame totes. This is the pattern and it's by um, the Fat Porter Gypsy. Um, and this may, it comes in three different sizes and it also comes in a casserole um, holder size too. And so this is the small wire um, that we you insert into the bag, but this is the bag, perfect for going to the collecting your pumpkins. And so the wire is inside the very top of the bag, and inside there are pockets and um, plenty of room. It's a very sturdy bag. Um, great for carrying anything you're knitting your um, you know if you're going over to a friend's house to quilt or if you're coming here to take a class it'll hold all your different notions for you um, this is the small tote and then there's a medium tote and there's also a large tote and the thing about these frames is that they don't bend they're not like the doctor bag kind they stay just like this and how you would wash your bag is you would unvelcro the inside here and this bag does use um, the foam uh, to give it that nice body to the to the bag but the wire comes out and you can stick this in the wash and um, when it comes out you just stick the wire back in and you roll the the Velcro back over the edge of it and is ready to go. Um, it is called the wire frame tote and um, there's a pattern and then the wire frames are sold separately and they come in small, medium, and large. And I made that bag, which I'm not a bag maker, but I'm trying to learn new things. so. A um, couple more things. Always fun for 
holiday time um, are the pumpkin party bowls or the natural, natural inspiration leaf bowls. And these are made with moldable interfacing. So what you do is um, you cut out your fabric pieces and you put them on both sides of this moldable double-sided fusible. And um, in the package comes one sheet. It's uh, nine and a half by 12 and you can definitely get one bowl out of um, the sheet. I don't have the pumpkin made up. You can see I have my pieces here all ready to go. I didn't get to that one. Um, but I did make up the leaf bowl. And as you can see, it is an actual bowl. It can hold your little candies or your little notions, car keys. You know, it's um, just a pretty little decoration to have around. And what it is, is you would apply your fabric in the leaf shape to the front and the back side. There's the back side. Um, then you use a satin stitch or a zigzag and you go um, over um, each of the veins in the leaf and around the edge uh, just to uh, finish it off nicely. And then what you do is you warm it up with your iron. This is totally flat when you're working with it. And you warm it up with your iron and you take a regular bowl that you have in your house and you get this nice and hot and you put it over the bowl and you just kind of hold it on the bowl until it cools and forms into the nice bowl shape that we have here. And so if you wanted to change up your bowl shape, all you have to do is heat this back up again and you can reform it um, into whatever shape bowl you want to do next. So these are also on the class calendar. Um, it'll be October 6th or 9th or 21st. Um, I know that one of them is a morning class, but I think the other two are maybe afternoon classes. So if you want to make one of these, it's real simple. We get it done in the, in the class. Um, lots of fun. A cute little hostess gift that you could give to if you're going to go visit family or friends. Um, one pattern that I got one block done, I'll definitely do more because it's really cute, um, is the sun, it's called sunflower seeds. You have to have sunflowers, it's fall. Um, so it's called sunflower seeds and it's by the pattern basket. Um, it's Margo, uh, I can't do the last name, Margo Designs. Um, so it's called Sunflower Seeds, and this is the block that we made up. I think that for the next one, I'm going to maybe just use all golden colors instead of putting in the yellows, but I think it's cute. It turned out pretty nice. This is all pieced. Um, you'll do strip piecing and then piece together the, the different parts. It's a really cute little block and uh, great for fall you can do three of them and do a little table runner for uh, Thanksgiving and that's called sunflower seeds this one is a finish you had I, you probably saw this in it was either August or September that I showed the quilt top but I finished it I finished the quilting on it and I just did um, straight grid uh, quilting on it on my regular sewing machine um, and I use um, blue painters tape as my reference marks so I don't draw on the quilt what I do is I line up my blue painters tape on lining it up on the diagonals of the blocks all the way from corner to corner and I will sew right next to that blue tape and then I'll move the blue tape over to the next group and then the next group and then so I'll pull all of mine this way and then all of the lines go in the other diagonal way um, and of course I did use a walking foot so that the fabric feeds through evenly so you don't get any puckers and so this is called um, barn quilt number two 
There are four of them in the series. They are cute little patterns by Coriander Quilts. Um, they are all 40 by 40, just like a barn size quilt. Um, and um, they're a lot of fun to make. You can make them from um, pre-cuts, like I did in this case. Um, these were all a pre-cut group of fall colors. And then I just had to add my gray background and then my border um, aqua that I have here, teal. Um, but it was fun to make, easy to make, and easy to quilt. Uh, the quilt here on the table, let me just move all my pumpkins. The quilt here on the table, you might have seen in the shop. Uh, can't move it on that end. Uh, it is called uh, Leaf It To Me, and it is a pattern by um, Cozy Quilt Designs. And it is one of the classes on our calendar. It's on October 29th. Um, leave it to me. And it uses the strip tube ruler. Um, Cozy Quilt Designs um, came up with this method of using strips um, to create quilt blocks. And it is just a really smart way um, and a fun way to put block pieces together. And so what you do for, for this, if you've never heard of the strip tube uh, ruler, um, what you do is you take your two and a half inch squares and you sew them together. Then you sew two more together. And then you sew right sides together. You sew the four strips together on this side and this side. And it creates a tube. And so You'll have a tube like this. You'll lay it on your cutting mat. And we'll do, we would lay the ruler on the strip and you make your cut and you flip it, make a cut. And so then you'll have pieces that look like this. And there might be a little stitch up here and you would just pop that. And then you open it up and you have a square with diagonal colors in it. And so each one of these leaves is made up of one of these squares and so is the border on this. Um, of course a different size. Um, but uh, each one of the blocks are made up of, and this is a great way to use up all your different scraps. Uh, maybe you have a bunch of strips um, that you've cut on your AccuQuilt cutter, strip cutter. Um, you can use them to um, create these tubes and make all different kinds of patterns. And believe me, Cozy Quilt Designs has tons of patterns. This is not a one and done ruler. This has lots of patterns. Um, and you can even see more of the quilts that we've done with it here in the shop. Um, Spin Cycle is one of them that we have done um, in the classroom. And um, there's a couple other ones too. We even did a mystery quilt a couple of years ago using this ruler. So it's just a fun one to play around with. We have a lot of new quilters here at the shop um, since we've opened back up. And so this might not be new to you, but it might be new to them. And it'll be something uh, fun for them to give a try. And that's Leave It To Me and it'll be on October 29th and it's an afternoon class, lots of fun. So, in the shop, we have some new fabrics that came in, and I really want to show you um, these four new batik fabrics that came in. Aren't they beautiful? This is called um, Patina Hand Paints. So, these are hand painted batiks instead of wax printed. So, that's the blue colorway. This is an emerald and purple and blue colorway. This 
This is the purple and blue colorway, which so far has been the most popular with our, uh, our uh, customers and friends. And then this one's my favorite. This one has all the colors on it. Isn't that pretty? And so these are the new batiks, and they're by Robert Kaufman. Um, you'll have to come in and check them out. Another um, panel piece that we just got in that we just absolutely love is um, by Sue Penn. And it is called Light in the Forest. And it is so perfect for fall, but it doesn't have to be just for fall. This could be up year round and it would be just as pretty. Um, there are two pieces, uh, coordinating fabrics that go with it. This is one of them that has these beautiful um, designs, kind of a floral kind of look. Kind of looks like a spirograph. Remember those from being a kid? And actually they look really pretty with these. The other one is the leaves on this beautiful turquoise color. And I have to show you what Darla has recently uh, finished. Um, she just finished the quilt top using this panel piece and it is gorgeous. She's going to have a class for it. Most likely it will take place in November seeing that our October um, class calendar is totally full right now. You'll have to check that out. Hopefully you saw that in the newsletter yesterday. And so here is her quilt that she made with it for a wall hanging. Isn't that beautiful? The color, um, this orange rust color that you see here around this is a um, grunge fabric. It's called Yam. It's one of my top five favorite colors here in the shop and it is beautiful with blue uh, as you can see it really shows shows off the blue nicely but so watch for this one on the November calendar um, it's a beautiful piece so come on in and see us in the shop uh, come in and see these uh, products uh, for yourself and um, enjoy your quiltober